In this video, I am going to demonstrate two ways of calculating the volume of a regular tetrahedron. The first one is the basic method and then the second one is a, a, an interesting one using symmetry and all. So let's dig into the first method but before that I would like to tell you that there is a video on my channel which is called uh, about prisms and pyramids. I will post the link in description. You should go and watch that. Then you will feel very ready for this kind of stuff. So, okay, so we are dealing about dealing with a regular tetrahedron. So this is my x, y, z axis and I have this x, y plane. I want to construct a regular tetrahedron. So in the x, y plane, I let's just construct a an equilateral triangle. This is one of the face of the regular tetrahedron. And let's say that uh, the edge length of this triangle is A, which is also going to be the edge length of the regular tetrahedron. You can feel that I'm going to construct the regular tetrahedron either above this plane or below this point. The vertex I can take above or below, but that vertex should be directly above the centeroid. And this distance, this distance what you have to go here, this we will calculate first because this is not going to be A these distances will be a so that you get a regular tetrahedron okay so this is my regular tetrahedron and then uh, let's first figure out the height of the regular tetrahedron which is this length let's say this is d let's first calculate gd for that let's first uh, think about these three lengths in the base ga gb and gc and uh, you can see that uh, very simply that they are two thirds of uh, median, two thirds of the median length. That way you can also calculate uh, or uh, you can directly go into these uh, triangles. These, these three triangles here, this one and this one and this one, they are uh, congruent of course. And that is why uh, the angle, these uh, central angles here, they are 120 degrees, all of them. So. I can here I can uh, say that these two lengths are x and then I can use the cosine formula. I really love this cosine formula actually because this is a generalization of Pythagoras theorem. What is this uh, cosine formula? It's like uh, when you have a triangle let's say ABC and uh, let's say that the these sides BC is A, AC is B and uh, AB is C. You see I use the symbol A uh, small a opposite to b angle a. This is a very general convention in triangles. But anyways, if I have to calculate this angle, cosine of this angle c, let's call this theta. So what I do when I write this cos theta, I will take uh, these two sides which are making up this angle theta and add the square of the, these sides and subtract the square of the other side which is opposite to theta and then divide by 2ab. You see, this is a very general formula. You can prove it. It's, a, it's very simple. This formula also appears in uh, when you are doing vector sum of two vectors. You have to calculate the magnitude of the resultant of the vector inclined at an angle theta. You will again use this kind of formula. So this is very uh, useful formula and uh, the proof of it is also simple. You can do it using by constructing some right angle triangles in the triangle. So I'm not going to go into that. So here you see, this is also generalization of Pythagoras theorem. Why? Because if you put theta is equal to 90 degree, uh, cos theta will be 0 and uh, this 2ab will multiply here and it will be 0 and then you will get that c square is equal to a square plus b square and the c will turn out to be hypotenuse. So there you get your Pythagoras theorem also. I'm not going to go into the proof of all these things. Let's just apply this cosine formula here, cos 120 degree. So I have summed up the squares of these x's and then subtracted a square and then 2 into x into x and cos 120 degree is minus half and then from there we calculate the length this length x turns out to be a by root 3 okay so now we are going to dig into this triangle dgc dgc you see, we are in 3D, but we are making use of uh, 2D elements. We are slicing uh, the 3D shapes from some angle and then we are getting 
these triangles and we are doing calculations in this triangle that is so 3d is just uh, made up of 2d elements right but in in a much more infinitely more directions as compared to what it was in 2d well so now in dgc there is no doubt that the angle at g is 90 degrees because of symmetry that you can feel because i can't have my d anywhere else otherwise it will these lengths will change these lengths will change right so that angle at uh, g d this angle is 90 degree and uh, we know that uh, cd is a right let's say that dg is c so we know this x we will have to calculate we should apply now pythagoras theorem pretty basic and then we get x as a root 2 by 3 great so now what we are going to do i'm not going to do complete calculus taking different elements and integrating because that i have done in my video which uh, is called about on prisms and pyramids and uh, the link i will post in description please go and watch that that's a very interesting video so from there from that video okay this length is a root 2 by 3 that's okay from that video uh, I, in that video, I have proved that for same base and height, the volume of a pyramid is one third of volume of a prism. But what is a pyramid and what is a prism? That has been very nicely explained there. But here I will also give you a quick uh, um, summary. What is a pyramid? Pyramid is something which ends at a point, and there is a base uh, which can be any polygonal base, and it should be linearly extruded, like using straight lines like this. And it should end at this point which is also called apex so you see this this base is linearly decaying and collapsing into a point this is a pyramid and uh, you can extrude it at any angle also you can also extrude it like this at this point you can linearly exclude extrude the base this is also a pyramid and what is a prism a prism is something uh, which is more basic than a pyramid in that you preserve the base. If this is your base, you preserve the base and you use these parallel lines. This could be in any direction, perpendicular or may not be perpendicular, but you preserve the base and you linearly extrude that uh, thing. You can also use a polygonal base, uh, curved bases. So cylinders will also become prisms and cone will also become pyramids. Okay, so these are prisms and these are pyramids. Okay, so it's very interesting that the volume of a pyramid turns out to be one third, always one third of the volume of a prism. So here we are going to use this result and uh, you see that this is our, uh, our regular tetrahedron is also a prism. So this is also a pyramid and I can construct a prism around it and uh, from here I can think of the volume of this whole prism and one third of that volume will be my volume of the regular tetrahedron. Okay, so volume of this pyramid which is our uh, regular tetrahedron will be one third of the base area into height because volume of the prism is very simply you can see that this is base area time side this is how volume is defined so we're going to use that okay so let's think about the base area the base is an equilateral triangle and you have uh, this 60 degrees so you will have this length as a cos 60 degree and uh, the length of the median will be a sine 60 degrees okay so you can do uh, area half into base into height. So base is basically 2a cos 60 degrees, right? So you can just simply multiply a cos 60 and a sine 60. And then you will get this area of uh, the base. So We have got the base area now. What we need to do next, we need to, we have already figured out the height, which is a root 2 by 3 and then multiply by 1 by 3. And this will give as the volume of the regular tetrahedron this expression not a very nice expression 6 root 2 but yeah 
Now, I would like to discuss uh, the second method, which is very interesting. In this, um, I don't need to use a lot of calculus. Once I know this thing, you know, once I know this uh, idea that the volume of a pyramid is one third volume of a prism, same base, same height. same base same height okay then by using this uh, relation this formula we can figure out very easily so what I'm going to do now I am taking a cube and then I am drawing a regular tetrahedron inside a cube this in itself is very interesting you have eight vertices in the cube and in a regular tetrahedron, you will only have four vertices. So out of these eight, I'm going to do a selection of four. A very interesting selection of four. Not all four on the top, because if I select all these four vertices on the top, I will get a square. I need to select it in a more interesting way. So what I'm going to do, select two opposite vertices on the top face and select two op opposite vertices on the opposite diagonal in the bottom face like this so there's nothing special about this top and bottom I'm, I'm talking in terms of top face and bottom face you can also uh, think it like you go to left and right face so in the left face I have chosen two opposite vertices on a particular diagonal and on that opposite diagonal I will choose the other two points on the right face of course so this way I have selected these four points and then I start to construct join uh, these four points together and you will see all of these lengths and these red lines will be the face diagonal of the cube and that is why it's guaranteed that what we are getting here is a regular tetrahedron. Pretty interesting. And then from here, um, let's talk about the volume of this regular tetrahedron. What do you see here? is like besides this uh, volume of the regular tetrahedron we have these volumes also right these volumes also how many these volumes so one here one from this vertex one from that vertex and one from that opposite vertex so you will have four such and these things are also tetrahedrons but they are not regular these lengths are not the red length is different than the blue length so these things are also tetrahedrons and tetrahedrons are pyramids so we can use uh, uh, one third of the volume of prism uh, relation and then we can uh, do the calculation of the volume of the regular tetrahedron in a elegant way let's do it so volume of the cube the whole cube will be the volume of the regular tetrahedron and four times volume of these other tetrahedrons which are not regular okay so let's say that the edge length of the tetrahedron is a what would be the edge length of the cube that would be a by root 2 right because this is 90 degrees and these and these lengths are going to be same let's say that they are x and then use Pythagoras theorem and you can figure out that they will be a by root 2 lesser than a of course so a by root 2 or you can also take a, the component this is 45 degrees so you can take a component here this side and that side a by root 2 cos and sine 45 degrees are 1 by root 2 so that way uh, we can now write the volume of the cube which would be a by root 2 whole cubed then volume of the re regular tetrahedron uh, we will have to calculate that so let's leave it because we uh, sub we we are not going to use the previous result of course because we are doing it in a different way so this time I will have to think about the volume of uh, these ones this is easier this is uh, the volume of these uh, tetrahedrons to calculate the volume of these th uh, tetrahedrons is easier why because take a look at this uh, the base area is very simple uh, it's half a square this is your because this is 90 degrees this is height this is base so the base area here is very simple half a square and the height is also a pretty interesting so 4 into 1 by 3 into half into a into a into a and uh, well sorry sorry this I this this length is a by root 2 <laughs> so this I also missed when I was making this presentation that's why you see these uh, root 2's coming later on okay so uh, th these are not a a a all of these lengths are a by root 2 
because they are edge length of the cube okay and then we just have to sum it up arrange it and you will get the same expression now I would like to verify it so this is 2 and uh, 2 a cube by 3 into 2 root 2 perfect and then 2 by 3 and this is 1 times a cube by 2 root 2 so 1 minus 2 by 3 will be 1 by 3 times these two will get subtracted so you'll get 1 by third of a cube by 2 root 2 perfect yeah and this is what we got in the previous method also well so you maybe you can figure out more ways of finding the area of a regular tetrahedron and play with the geometry of platonic solids and uh, if you haven't watched that video which i was talking about please go and watch that that would be a very interesting video to watch i will post the link in the description thank you for watching have a nice day